want to thank you for uh, for speaking with us today. You got it. No problem. So let's start where most people do. Uh, where does winning the 2009 British Open rank in your life's proudest moments? Well, professionally, it's it's the the highest for sure. Um, to you know, capture a major, uh, there's nothing like it in uh, in the world of golf for sure. But um, you know, it's, I'll remember details of that day forever, and uh, hopefully, I'll win more majors and I'll get to remember parts of those days too. But uh, for now, that that day playing against Watson was uh, something that I'll never forget. After you won, would you say that your life changed in any particular way? On the course, it did. Definitely, I, I received a lot more recognition from the fans, and it um, seems like I get a lot more support from outside the ropes, and uh, that's great. But uh, off the course, I think my life really didn't change very much, and that's one of the, one of the things about the post-British Open win, uh, you know, Stewart Sink after the Open. That's one of the things I'm most proud of is that I've been able to maintain the same basic uh, life that I had before, which is, uh, it has been, you know, I'm just beyond blessed. Great. Uh, when was the last time you would say you were really nervous on a golf course? Every single round I play, I'm nervous on the golf course. Uh, uh, first tee, I'm nervous, uh, anticipating. I got butterflies. Um, down the stretch, I get nervous. It's just a, uh, it's part of the game. And I think if you if you stop getting nervous, then uh, it's time probably to retire because uh, that's a sign that doesn't mean anything to you anymore. But it sure means a lot to me. So you, I guess you would say it's kind of. Uh, your motivation when you're out there? Well, it's no, I wouldn't say that. I'd say uh, it's it's uh, probably because I'm motivated to do well. That's that leads me to be nervous because I, I want it so bad that uh, you know it just it means a whole lot. And anything that means a lot and it could have a vast number of results. You know, you're always anxious to find out what the results are going to be, and uh, that leads to nerves. Okay. Uh, looking ahead, you mentioned you hope, obviously, that you win several more majors within your career. Uh, we've got one upcoming here in the next week. Uh, you're entering the U.S. Open ranked 69th in the official rankings. Yet in 97, uh, the last time you played at the Congressional when it was held there, uh, you ended the second day tied with the eventual champ, Ernie Ells, at two under. Is the Congressional a course you particularly like, or and what do you think your chances are? It's hard to say if it's a course I like or not. I have only played there once since uh, since '97. I think it was in 2005 I played there, so um, not too familiar with the course. Plus, the way they change it up for the U.S. Open, it's uh, it's a whole new golf course anyway. Uh, but it is, it will be a big course. We know that it'll be a ball strikers type of paradise where you got to hit fairways, hit greens, and be smart and be patient, and grind out a bunch of really tough pars and. Uh, that's my game. So uh, if there's a golf course that fits me for the U.S. Open, it would be a, a congressional type of course. Uh, but of course, it remains to be seen. Um, I've been playing pretty well lately, solid, not spectacular maybe, but uh, been doing a lot of the right things. So hopefully that'll lead to a good finish or a win there. I, I want to get your opinion. Just in general, Americans tend to do very well at the U.S. Open. Uh, by my account, they've won 79 of the 100 and time, 110 times it's, uh, it's been held. Is there a particular reason why that is, or what are your thoughts on that? I think the reason that, it, that it's that way is that a, a lot of those happened a long time ago before it was real easy to travel across the pond, and the fields were vastly made up of Americans back then in those days. Uh, that's all changed now. Um, golf is a global sport, and uh, there's people from everywhere challenging for the number one ranking. The Ryder Cup's obviously been in European hands more often than it's been in American hands uh, since I've been playing in Ryder Cups. And uh, so the whole landscape has changed in that regard. I think you can throw the record books out. Okay. Uh, you mentioned the Ryder Cup. Uh, and I'm curious, what would winning uh, the nation's premier tournament mean to you personally and perhaps even in comparison to uh, your many times uh, representing the country for both the Ryder and President's Cups? Well, it would mean the world, obviously. Uh, it's, it's, you can't really say one major is better than the other one because uh, you know they're all wonderful tournaments and they mean a lot to your career. But I really think the U.S. Open being sort of the, the national championship for the country that I'm from would be um, that would be a, a definite uh, a definite plus to be able to call call myself a champion of that. As far as comparing it to the Ryder Cup, it's um, 
I don't know. It's hard to say because um, I've had some great moments in the Ryder Cup when the team lost, like in 2006 when I uh, won this uh, singles match against Sergio, which was a great experience for me, but the team lost. Um, in 2008, the team won the uh, Ryder Cup, which was also fantastic, and it was a wonderful experience. Um, but then winning the major in 2009 was also great. So it's, uh, it's hard to say. I, I know one thing, though. I like to be a part of every Ryder Cup team in some way. I've been, I've been on the last five teams, and um, I also would like to be in contention for every major coming up, and uh, hopefully that will start next week. Earlier this week, uh, you hosted what I believe is the ninth annual Healing Place Charity Championship. Yeah, that's right. Uh, perhaps you could tell me a little bit about that organization, uh, its emphasis on support programs for grieving children, and why you've made that one of your primary charitable causes. Well, thank you for asking about that. It um, means a lot to me. It's in my hometown of uh, Florence, Alabama, way up in the northwest corner of the state. Uh, Ten years ago or so, we, um, I was looking for uh, a, a cause to get behind in my hometown. I'd been on tour for a few years and sort of established myself as a, as a, a, a player um, who was going to be around for a while out there and was looking for something to, to really take under my wing. And uh, my best friend from home, Chad Parker, his sister was running this uh, grief counseling center for kids, and they were struggling with their funding, with their grants. Uh, the economy was in trouble with the uh, 9-11 effects. Um, and also my wife, when she was 10 years old, she lost her father to a car accident and never really had a real system for uh, grief support. So uh, everything came together. We had our first tournament, I believe, in 2003. And uh, it's been great. Some of the tour players have come uh, to support me in the calls. Uh, every year we've had anywhere from three to six players. And uh, we've raised some money locally for, for these kids that need so much help. And of course, recently we've had a lot of tornado activity down south. And um, there's a lot of kids that have lost their parents in those storms. So especially in 2011, it's been very, very close to home. Fantastic. Uh, last, not to hit a sour note by any means, but. I know you're a big fan and season ticket holder for the Atlanta Thrashers, so I, I do have to ask you, what did you think of the news that they uh, decided to relocate to Winnipeg? Yeah, it was difficult to uh, to accept that news. Uh, you know, I, I love the Atlanta Thrashers when they were here, but uh, I guess uh, it just wasn't the town for them or uh, something. I don't know. I can't explain it. I don't know the I don't know the nuts and bolts of the whole situation. All I know is that my team's gone now, and I don't have an NHL team to root for. But it's. Um, it's just one of those things in sports, you know, it definitely is a reminder that sports is a business and, um, and that sometimes the business doesn't work. And uh, so that's the situation we're left in. All right, well, as we prepare to part, is there anything else that you want to tell us about today? Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Dove uh, Men Plus Care Journey to Comfort, if that's okay. Uh, um, it's a campaign that Dove Men Plus Care and I have been working on along with Davis Love III and John Thompson III and Magic Johnson and some other remarkable uh, athletes in other sports. It's been cool for me to get to know their stories and um, also get my story out there to, uh, to the people that want to follow along and, and read about my journey to comfort. Um, all that can be found on uh, dovemancare.com and uh, there's some pretty neat videos on there and it's great to establish that connection with my fans. Great, well Stuart, thank you so much for joining us today on behalf of uh, the post game. And uh, good luck at the U.S. Open. Okay, thanks very much.